Right behind me is Canyon Lake. It's just outside of San Antonio, Texas, and you can do a lot of fun things at the lake. You can tow a trailer to launch a boat out here. You can go camping and you can do water sports. Now to do all that, you need a big truck to tow all of those toys. Now for the longest time, Toyota has only offered the, this model here. This is the 2021 Toyota Tundra. It's capable, it's reliable, it's well built, and it's also old as that's right, this generation came out back in 2007. And to put that into perspective, I was in high school still when this second generation Tundra came out. But Toyota is finally listened because I am here just outside of San Antonio to drive the completely redesigned 2022 Tundra. That's right, this model right here is completely new from the ground up. It's built right at their San Antonio truck manufacturing facility. And because Toyota waited about 15 years to give us an all new truck, they basically pulled out all the stops. It's new from the ground up. I'm talking about new frame, new styling, completely redesigned interior, and a new hybrid powertrain that sits at the very top of the totem pole. So has Toyota done enough changes here to finally allow the Tundra to compete with the big three from Detroit? Stay tuned to find out. So when you've been waiting 15 years for an all new generation, you can believe that a lot of fans of the Tundra have been eagerly waiting and Toyota wanted to make sure that they delivered a product that's going to, of course, appeal to all the fans. So let me start, of course, with the styling of this new Tundra. And I do have the old one in the background, which I'll reference a couple times, but this particular one here is the 1794 edition. This is basically almost at the very top of the totem pole. Technically, Toyota says the TRD Pro is an even higher trim versus the 1794. This Kind of matches the platinum in terms of equipment but if you guys like chrome and you kind of like that thex that texas theme you're going to like this one here which is why the 1794 exists in the lineup now of course looking at the styling the first thing you're going to notice this massive and i'm talking about massive this is a really big chromey grill in fact toyota offers seven different grills on the tundra depending on the trims there's actually six trims so there's seven grills which is interesting how Toyota X offers an extra grill. You can see this one here you can tell is the hybrid version because the Toyota emblem here is blue accented. If you guys go for a TRD Pro, you won't be able to tell that because instead of this logo here, they spell out Toyota in the center over there and you can see Tundra is nicely stamped in the actual front grill. Uh, you do have LED fog lights that you'll find on most of the higher end trims. And I actually really like the chrome grill on the 1794. I'm typically not a fan of chrome, but Toyota offers a black grill if you guys prefer that on several different uh, trim configurations. Now, let me show you guys the headlights. These headlights are completely redesigned. As you can see, full LED headlights are gonna be standard equipment on every Tundra, which is a one up from the previous generation, which had halogen headlights. If you guys go for a limited with an option package trim, you'll actually get sequential LED turn signals. You can see LED daytime running lights, LED low and high beams. These air intakes here are functional. Toyota wanted to make sure a lot of the air vents that you see are functional. And so far, let me know what you think in the comments below of the styling. It's definitely growing on me. Some of you have said that it's a little bit too in your face. The grill's a little too much, but that's kind of what Toyota is doing nowadays with their current design theme. Now, looking at the side profile, you're gonna notice a couple things. This one here is the Crew Max configuration. The Crew Max is what Toyota typically says sells the most. They also offer a double cab configuration, which is kind of like an extended cab. Uh, and this one here is painted in like this cinnamon brown color, which goes well with a 1794 edition package. Uh, the wheel options you can see come standard with a 20 inch wheel if you guys go for the Platinum or the 1794. There's also a TRD off-road package that you can option in that'll give you black 20 inch wheels with knobby or all-terrain tires. These street tires, these Bridgestone dwellers definitely make the truck look a little bit puny. Uh, but again, Toyota offers several different options to give this truck a meaner look. There's even a factory lift kit from the access from the dealer. It'll give you a three inch factory lift. You could put an all-terrain tire on this vehicle if you guys want. The TRD Pros come with a 33 inch tall uh, tire already. You can see looking at the rest of the profile here, there is chrome on the side mirrors, chrome on the trim down here, chrome on the window belt line, which again will be blacked out depending on the trim. If you guys go for a limited and up trim, they will come uh, available with a pano sunroof. The pano roof is standard on the 1794, uh, the Platinum and the TRD uh, Pro trim, which is great because Toyota didn't even offer a panoramic roof on the previous generation. And coming over here to the bed length, Toyota made one critical change for this new generation. The old one over there, 
as you can see, is a Crew Max with a five and a half foot bed. That's still the standard configuration in the TRD Pro, but now if you guys go for the other trims, you can now option in a six and a half foot bed. So at an overall length of around 252 inches long, this is one of the bigger trucks in the segment. In fact, Toyota basically kept the wheelbase the same on this new generation as the old one at around 145 or 157 inches long, but now they've lengthened the truck by about five inches, 4.7 inches, because they wanted to give us more space on the inside and give it bigger presence. They've also widened the truck by about an inch and a half. It's also an inch, and a, uh, an inch taller, which is why the TRD Pro has those clearance lights, which again accentuates how wide the truck is. Now, looking over here at the rear of the new Tundra, uh, one thing that I pointed out in my, my early first look video, you can see a lot of the body lines here are completely uh, flush. They made these gaps extra tight to give it a more high quality look. And now that we're looking over here, the rear suspension has also been completely redesigned this year. It now has a multi-link setup here. It's still a live axle, but instead of leaf springs, you have coil springs, and Toyota gives the, the option of an air suspension in the rear only, which this truck has. It allows you to raise and lower the rear suspension if you guys want, and you can also get it with adaptive variable suspension. That is included on this trim when you guys go for that rear air suspension. It's only available on the Platinum and the 1794 edition. Now, looking over here at the back, you can see more chrome on the rear bumper, full LED taillights. The old one didn't even offer LED taillights, and uh, if you guys go for the LED headlights with the sequential function, you also get that here on the back where the taillights are also sequ sequential. So that's a really nice premium touch. You can't even find that on most of the competitors. Uh, so Toyota, again, offers some great options here that finally bring this truck into the modern 21st century. Now, opening up the tailgate, all Tundras will come with a remote uh, access to the tailgate where you can push a button on the fob. It'll open the tailgate electronically. That's a new feature, although a lot of other trucks have offered that. One new feature here that no other truck has, let's say you're carrying a bunch of heavy stuff here, or your hands are full, and you want to get into the tailgate. Well, Toyota has a simple solution here. You can bump that with your elbow and that allows you to open up the tailgate. That is an optional feature. It's included, I believe, on the limited and up trims. If you don't wanna use that side feature again, there is another feature here where the tailgate opens up. It's also a damped tailgate and Toyota offers up to 115 different accessories. You can see this one here with the six and a half foot bed really makes this a usable truck. Toyota said they had so many customers complaining that they had to compromise between either having the cab passenger space or the bed space. Now you don't have to do that as long as you don't want the TRD Pro. You can still get features like a spray-in or a drop-in bed liner. You can get a tonneau cover. You can get a bed extender. There's a lot of LED lighting in here. There's also a 400 watt power outlet in here, an inverter, although this is relatively um, old technology compared to what you can get on something like the Ford F-150 with their Pro Power on board. Toyota says that there just simply wasn't a need for their from their customer base to add something like that, which I kind of think that they should consider that. But overall, the bed, extremely usable, and this is now on par with a lot of its American competitors because you can now get the Crew Max full full-size doors with the longer bed. So now that I've talked your ear off about the exterior styling changes of the new Tundra, let me hop inside and show you guys a detailed look of this redesigned interior. Now, first of all, here is the key fob for the new Tundra. You can see this is Toyota's newest key that they use in a lot of their vehicles. The smart access system is standard on this trim, available, I'm guessing, on the lower grades. And as you can see here with the smart access key, Toyota actually only gives you, it looks like, a locking and unlocking function on the front doors. So there's where you lock the doors. Uh, and then the mirrors will electrically fold in. And then when you unlock the door, you can see this particular one here has that power retractable running board, which you find on a lot of the competitors. Uh, and to go with the brown exterior, my tester has this kind of brown dune interior. This is the full leather interior. The seats are heated and ventilated in the front and in the rear. And I also want to remind you that this is a very early pre-production vehicle. Toyota isn't even building the Tundras yet as of this filming. Uh, so you're going to notice some of the materials in here, like this smooth plastic. This is not production spec. Uh, same thing with here on the seat rails. So kind of keep that in mind. But the 1794 is the most luxurious cab. And you can see the seats have been completely redesigned, although they kind of remind me of the first generation Tundra seats in the way they look at least. But I do like the contrast stitching and the piping, the fact that they're heated and cooled. You do have two-person memory seats, and then this wood trim you can see is genuine wood, and there's also real stitching and real leather materials on the door panel. So for early pre-production model, this interior does look pretty nice, and I love this color combination. Now getting inside, you can see there's a nice grab handle here uh, with the step that allows you to kind of get into the truck very easily. As I shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk, so that gives me a great impression of quality. Now, starting the vehicle up, there's a power button right here behind the steering wheel, which is blocked by the steering wheel, but 
Turning the vehicle on, you can see this 1794 includes the fully digital 12.3 inch display, which as you guys saw, it shows you a really cool graphic of five different national parks. It changes based every time you key cycle on and off the, the truck. And then you can see here to complement the 12.3 inch display, which comes standard on the 1794 Platinum and TRD Pro, there's a massive 14 inch display here. This is Toyota's new multimedia audio system or Toyota Audio Multimedia. It's been developed in-house by Toyota Connected Services. So an American team basically designed this new head unit. It is completely cloud-based. So it is going to be, or you're going to have to be required to get a subscription service to get those over-the-air updates and to allow it to function. Now, let's talk about the interior materials of this 1794. So you can see more genuine American walnut that you'll find on the door panel or on the dashboard and on the center console. Real stitching here on this upper portion of the door pan or of the, the dashboard, a little bit of a storage area here, uh, more of that wood grain with the 1794 uh, logo right there in the wood grain. Nice hard buttons over here for your volume knob. You have dual zone climate control. You have heated and ventilated seats, like I said. And then down here, you can see more buttons for your air suspension where you can raise and lower it, traction control. And then this button here, you can see, put that, push that button. This car, this truck does have a full 360 degree perimeter scan. And you can see the graphics have been completely redesigned. I mean, that looks a lot better versus the system that you'll find in the older Toyota connected uh, head units, whatnot. This is the, I'm thinking of one in my Toyota RAV4 Prime, for example. But when you put the truck into reverse, you can see there is the full 360 camera that gives you trajectory parking sensors. And this truck also has features like a trailer backup assist, where if you've got a trailer connected, it'll actually keep the trailer pointed straight. It'll actually steer for you automatically. Toyota had something set up there where you could test that. Uh, and it, come, it works all in conjunction, of course, with the full 360 camera. Now, letting the head unit come back, you can see there's the wireless Apple CarPlay. And my God, that screen looks great. Crystal clear graphics, beautiful. Very snappy, very responsive. You can see I'll pull up Waze. There's what Waze looks like on the CarPlay. It's huge. Uh, and if you want to just go to your regular home screen there, that's what it looks like. Amazing. Toyota finally gave us a worthy head unit that is very much, not even class competitive, almost class leading for me. So this is the largest touchscreen in the segment for now until the Ford F-150 Lightning comes out with its 15 and a half inch display. But I really, really love this. Now, let's go back to the Toyota head unit here because you can see this is basically where you get to all your different shortcuts. This is the main GPS. The GPS looks okay. It also has um, over the air updates. So this is constantly updating. If you go here to music, you can see there's where you can uh, enable the audio system, phone. There's no dedicated home screen for this truck or for this infotainment system. You can see pulling this up here, you can see this is your vehicle information. You can go to current, you can go to history. Going to the settings here, this is where you can adjust all the different settings. This truck does have interchangeable ambient lighting as well, um, which you can customize through here. Only the highest trim levels include those features. You can see here, go to lights, and this is where you can turn off a lot of uh, things on and off. Um, this system is pretty easy to navigate, although I think Toyota should consider adding maybe a hybrid display. That's what I was also looking for. There's no hybrid display in this infotainment system. And I, I think a dedicated home button would work nicely. There's the Apple CarPlay. If you just tap that screen there, you can just go back to the Toyota head unit here. This 12.3 inch display you can also see is interchangeable. I can change the way this looks by cycling through here. I can also go to different GPS, trailer input, your settings menu, there's your warning display. And then over here on the right side, you can also customize that. Now it shows your turbo boost gauge and your battery percentage and how much uh, electric motor torque it's adding up. If you want, you can go over here to the settings and you can basically customize that where you can customize the right side by pushing and holding here. And you can put things like your pitch and roll. Um, you can also go to tow gauges which for those of you who tow a lot, you're gonna really appreciate that. And you can just turn it off completely, which when I first got into the truck, it was off. I definitely like it on the boost gauges. I think that's a really cool feature. It reminds you that you're driving a hybrid truck, which is great. Now, this one being the 1794 also includes such premium features like that 10 inch head up display. This and the Platinum are the only ones to get that. And you also have the digital rear view mirror. So in case you guys have stuff in the back that's taking up uh, your visibility, flip that up, you can see there's a nice digital display of what's actually there. The steering wheel is also heated. It is power tilt and telescoping, which is really nice. This is the only trim along with the Platinum to get the power tilt and telescoping. It's linked, of course, with the memory seats. Uh, the leather on the wheel feels really high quality. There's some faux stitching here on the airbag cover, the horn. 
Sounds pretty appropriate considering the size of this truck. Also massive grab area here where you could rest your hand. This is a really comfortable position for me, although you're supposed to kind of hold it here. On the nine and three grip, you can see very nice grip bolstering. You have lots of controls here for your audio controls. You can adjust the screen there, your adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist. No paddles on the wheel. I was expecting paddles actually in the hybrid version, but no paddles at least would have given me regen paddles would have been great. There's a new electronic parking brake along with a brake hold feature. Your wireless phone charging pad is right here. You can see it fits my iPhone 12 Pro Max very nicely there. Your drive mode selector is right here. And then my tester is missing the TRD off-road package, which would give you the rear locker and then the Toyota multi-terrain select. That's standard, of course, on the um, TRD Pro. It also will give you crawl control. So instead, you can either go to tow haul here or you can go to drive modes and you can adjust the drive mode setting from either a custom, a sport plus, a sport, a normal, and then an eco mode, which I'll try the different drive modes out when we get this vehicle out onto test drive. And then you can see here when you adjust the air suspension, it shows either a normal, low, or high setting. Uh, and you can also manually control that if you'd like, or you can also adjust it manually uh, or auto let the system do it automatically for you. Now, opening this up, you can see pretty big cup holder area, which is nice. Um, there's a cool little storage bin right here, which again, ignore the plastics. That's not production spec. Opening this up, you can see you can access a lot of this by opening this up without having to open up the entire console. There's also a nice little lid area over here that's covered. Uh, nice walnut wood there. There's two USB, a USB-A and a USB-C. There's looks like you can put some store uh, spare change there. There's also another USB port over here. And then if you actually want to open this up, you can see pretty decent sized center console storage area. Although they don't offer some of the features like the F-150 where you have that shifter that folds down that gives you the, the table. So that's something to keep in mind. But this is a pretty nicely redesigned center console. Again, ignore some of the interior materials and the fit and finish. There is LED lighting in the cabin finally, which is great. There's still a sunglass holder up here. And then uh, the 1794 and most of the higher trims come standard with this panoramic sunroof, which is cool. Great, it goes all the way to the back, lets in a lot of light. Uh, that's a feature you couldn't even get on the old Tundra. The seats are pretty comfortable and supportive. I, I like the fact that it's eight way power with lumber on the driver's side with memory function, nice padded area over here. And then when you open up this, you can see the glove box is a pretty decent size. It's uh, damped, but not lined with felt. It's not a bin style, but it goes in pretty deep. Uh, so overall the cabin very much class leading if there's one thing that i think the tundra could work on is the premium audio system i have the 12 speaker jbl sound system which sounds decent however if uh, you compare it to the 18 or 20 speaker systems you hear in the ford and the ram this system definitely doesn't sound quite as good but this is the most premium upgraded sound system that you get on this fully loaded version so let's finally hop into the back seat of the new Tundra and I'm showing you guys specifically the Crew Max because a lot of people really like this configuration. This basically gives you enough space back here to carry your tall friends, your family, have enough room. Now the first thing I do want to show you, this is the hybrid version and because it's the hybrid version, you don't have the under seat storage underneath here. The gas only version will have that but that 1.87 kilowatt hour battery pack technically lives underneath here so you do lose that space underneath here. If you guys want that, you're gonna wanna again go for the standard gas only model. But as I get into the truck, you can see legroom back here is a lot. Toyota says you get around 46, or I'm sorry, 41.6 inches of legroom, and this is huge. In fact, if you're actually comparing this to the previous generation, you actually lost about an inch of legroom back here compared to the 2021 model, but I wouldn't even notice it because this is where I have the seat to drive. I'm five foot seven, I'm not the tallest person, but you can see very much ton of space back here, a uh, ton of features as well. You can see there's rear seat air vents on this 1794. You have heated and ventilated seats in the back. So Ram and Ford's not the only one that offers that. You can see two US USB ports, a USB A and a USB C. You have an actual power outlet over here, which is great. Cup holders, you have two map pockets over here. And then on the door panels, you can see there are manual rear window sunshades. So really great feature to have. This is only included again on the two top trims, the Platinum and the 1794. Now over here in the center, you can see armrest that folds down that gives you two cup holders, uh, which is really nice. And then for those of you who have the old Tundra, this rear window still slides down. That's standard on the Crew Max model. It completely rolls down electrically. So Toyota didn't have to get rid of that feature. The panoramic roof above me also lets in a lot of light. So this back seat, even though it doesn't have the most legroom in the segment, is pretty much going to be uh, nice to use, especially if you guys need to put car seats back here or just full-size adults. 
Now, because the Tundra is all new from the ground up, it gave Toyota an opportunity to completely redesign the powertrains. And in fact, if you guys like the V8, I'm sad to report that it is gone this year for the new generation. Instead, the standard engine is a 3.5 liter twin turbocharged V6 with direct injection and their D4ST uh, technology. That engine we've actually seen in the Lexus LS. It's also a variation of the engine that Toyota uses in the Land Cruiser Series 300. It makes 389 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. That's about eight more horsepower power and about 70 more pound-feet of torque versus the old outgoing 5.7 liter V8. So again, for a base engine, it certainly doesn't have base specs. Toyota says all of them use a 10-speed automatic transmission, so six more gears versus the previous generation, and that motor is the one that'll tow a maximum of 12,000 pounds. Now, of course, this is probably the one that I'm more interested about. This is the new iForce Max. Now, the name doesn't even imply that it's electrified, but it is. This is the first ever full hybrid version of the Tundra. In fact, this is the first application of their full hybrid with the twin turbo V6. So we have that same engine. Now it's augmented by a 36 kilowatt electric motor that develops about 48 horsepower on its own around 148 pound feet of torque as well. It's, it's supplemented by a 1.87 kilowatt hour nickel metal hydride battery pack. So the battery pack is really small. This is not a plug-in hybrid. It doesn't give you electric only range, but like the F-150 power boost, it will allow you to power on electric only at very low speeds. Now, of course, power is what you're curious about. This powertrain makes 437 horsepower that's seven more versus the Ford F-150 Power Boost if you're keeping score, and 583 pound-feet of torque. That is, again, nearly 600 pound-feet available as low as 2400 RPM, and you have that electric motor that's going to augment and add electric boost at low speeds. This powertrain also continues to use a 10-speed automatic transmission. It's the first Toyota hybrid system that uses a stepped automatic, so I'm going to be looking forward to talking about how this powertrain drives when we get out on the road. And this model, as it sits, will tow right around 11,000-ish pounds, a little bit less than the base V6. Payload capacity is at a maximum of 1,900 pounds, depending, of course, on the cab configuration that you get and whether you get two or four-wheel drive. Now, speaking of which, you're probably wondering fuel economy. The base engine is rated at 17 in the city, uh, 22 on the highway, about 19 combined. It goes up to 18.23 if you guys go for uh, the two-wheel drive version of the base non-hybrid. Sadly, Toyota does not have figures as of this filming yet for the hybrid version. They are claiming, of course, it's going to be better. The number they have to beat is the F-150 hybrid, which gets around 24 MPG combined. Uh, we'll get it out on the road, and I'll mention what I get in my real-world testing on this very short loop. The new Tundra is actually lighter this year because they use a lot more aluminum in the components. The bed is now aluminum composite, although it's not full aluminum like the F-150. As the uh, If you guys are comparing the base gas engine and only version, that's around 5,400 pounds. This model here is a lot heavier. It's about 500 pounds heavier versus if you guys go for the hybrid. It weighs in at just over 6,000 pounds, especially when you guys option in the longer six and a half foot bed. So the death of the V8 engine is definitely an area where a lot of enthusiasts are gonna be upset about. Let me first start up the old one with the V8 so you can remind yourselves how good this engine sounds. Yeah, it sounds good, especially with that TRD exhaust. So let's go ahead and fire up the hybrid version with the twin turbo V6. <laughs> yeah, it sounds cute. Toyota says there's a TRD exhaust option from the dealer and you're probably going to want it. All right, so we are finally behind the wheel of the brand new 2022 Toyota Tundra and I'm starting out the driving scene in this iForce Max, the hybrid model, because this is the one that I'm truly the most interested about. Remember, we have almost 600 pound feet of torque. Uh, this truck, the one that we're driving, does have four wheel drive. Uh, it does not have the TRD off-road package, however. Uh, I'm hoping I can switch into one later later on, but this has a 10-speed automatic. We've got 437 horsepower, so this is more powerful than what Ford puts in the F-150 Power Boost. So let's go ahead and try out a 0-60, to because I would like to see what I can do here. Okay, I got 6.38 seconds in my first run. The reaction time wasn't the best. It was a little into the red zone um, and we're at a slight uphill. So I suspect this truck could easily break 
the six second mark. And that is pretty great performance. Remember, this would compete along the lines with uh, Ford's Power Boost, which is probably around the under six second mark. The 6.2 V8 that you'll find in the General Motors trucks also is under the six second mark. So if I have another opportunity, I'll try it again. If not, I'll have to wait until I get this truck back home to test uh, for a week. But just driving the new, uh, Tundra with the iForce Max powertrain. Remember, we've got an all new fully boxed frame. We've got multi-link coil spring rear suspension. It's not independent, but uh, it is a, now a coil spring as opposed to a leaf spring. Uh, this platform is actually the same one that's shared with the Land Cruiser Series 300. So the next generation, they kind of merged the Land Cruiser's body on frame with the, you know, the new Tundra to develop this new fully boxed frame. This one also has the adaptive variable suspension, and we also have the rear air suspension, which the rear air suspension, you can con control the height manually if you'd like, but it's really just designed to be there to adjust the squat. You know, if you guys have a lot of stuff in the back or you're towing a heavy load, uh, it'll automatically pump up the rear suspension so you don't have to deal with that squat. And I have to say, my first impressions of the truck, I have it in Sport Plus right now, which the Sport Plus setting is unique to this particular one here because it has the adaptive air suspension. Uh, the truck feels really solid. It has a really controlled ride quality. The engine is that new twin turbo V6. And when you put your foot down here, this 10 speed is very smooth and it has really good passing power. But I do notice that sometimes it lags a little bit when I'm uh, first putting my foot down. And I'm not entirely sure. Maybe this one, this one is a very early pre-production model. So maybe Toyota will have the tuning set out. But First impressions are definitely positive considering how early a build this truck actually is. You can feel the low end torque of the hybrid as well. There's a little gauge display here that says, that says max. Every time I put my foot down, you can feel the electric motor torque. I mean, this develops 583 pound feet of torque at just 2400 RPM, but right below that, the electric motor is adding additional torque and you feel it off the line. It makes this truck feel a lot faster when I first put my foot down. In fact, as soon as I just tip into the throttle, I feel the torque and it actually gives me more acceleration than I'm expecting. So it's an interesting feeling uh, and it's just nice that I'm driving a new Tundra that feels fully modern because the old one was just so old with its V8 and its old six-speed automatic. And it's just nice to be driving something like this. Now, I do want to comment on the sound of this truck. There's no paddles on the wheel, but um, I put my foot down here. The noise is almost V8-like. It's definitely very guttural. It's like very deep sounding. It sounds better to me than the last EcoBoost Ford F-150 that I drove. Um, I'll get it, I'll hop into the standard gas only iForce later on in this video. But uh, the sound is certainly not gonna replace a V8. Toyota does offer a TRD uh, catback exhaust, or I don't believe it's catback anymore, but they do offer a sport exhaust from the dealer if you guys wanna, you know, give it a meaner sound. But again, if you guys want the V8, go buy the old one, but the V8 was a thirsty pig and it was old. So this is now, of course, what we expect in today's modern uh, truck world. And I actually really like it. It's first impressions are fantastic. Now in terms of the visibility, uh, as I go down the road here, the hood definitely takes some getting used to because it has a lot of these hood bulges. And that little thing there that's on the hood that shows that this is the iForce Max definitely gets into the way of your view a little bit. I mean, it's just a little strange to see it there. In fact, this one here is so early built. I think it's a 3D printed model that uh, is there. I don't think the production version is gonna look quite like that. But. Uh, Visibility is fine. The seats are also pretty comfortable. I have large side mir mirrors here. And the beauty about this truck is Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 comes standard. So you have adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking, blind spot monitoring. That's standard on every version of the Tundra. So it's great that uh, Toyota gives you that. A lot of manufacturers still make you pay extra for all that. <laughs> so I had it in two wheel drive there and uh, it's spinning out the tires a little bit. <laughs> But uh, as you can see, great power, lots of low end torque that it overwhelms the rear tires. So you're probably gonna wanna put some uh, stuff in the, in the bed to weigh it down a little bit, or at least drive in four wheel drive. There is no all wheel drive or four wheel drive auto setting here. So that kind of sucks, but it's a little comical. Let me get in the back. That it'll spin the, <laughs> maybe I should have some more weight in the back. You can put your, your fat self in the back row. <laughs> um, but yes, pretty good power, uh, quiet on the inside as well good visibility, comfortable seats, lots of room in here. I mean, if you guys are thinking the Tundra feels smaller than all the other American trucks, that's your, you couldn't be more wrong. This truck is built in San Antonio. It was designed in California. Uh, there's a design center in California and they also um, designed it in Michigan a little bit. So Toyota knows what they're doing when it comes to trucks. They've been building them for a while. Uh, and this new Tundra has been a long time coming. The hybrid model is basically their performance option. It's standard on the TRD Pro. 
And I can kind of see why after driving this just on this short drive. All right, 6.4 again. I was hoping I could do a little better, but we now we were only going uphill only 0.9, so less uphill. So yeah, I'm uh, a little sad I couldn't get into under the six second mark, but 6.4 is definitely respectable and it is slightly quicker than the last 5.7 V8 that I drove, which actually was only about maybe five, six months ago. So not bad performance, but I'll have to wait until I get it back home to see if I can break the six second mark. So Toyota didn't have final fuel economy figures for the iForce Max, the hybrid powertrain yet. And I've been driving this hybrid version uh, for about the last 10 miles, maybe 15 miles on uh, this main interstate here, just outside of San Antonio. And there's what the trip computer is saying. It's averaging 23 MPG so far. Now, obviously this is a very early prototype. I'm gonna have to wait to retest this when I have uh, the truck for a week. But uh, 23 miles to the gallon is very close to what the F-150 Power Boost gets, which is about 24 miles to the gallon. So I'm hoping when Toyota it finally has those final figures toward the end of the month is what they're saying they'll have it um, it'll be close to that mid 20 mile per gallon mark the gas engine gets about 20 miles to the gallon combined on the two-wheel drive version but uh, here on the highway we're cruising along in the 1794 this one has the adaptive variable suspension uh, which definitely uh, gives the ride quality that smoother feel that you expect in a truck that's going to be you know this expensive uh, and this also has the air suspension I have the car in its comfort setting now I'll, or eco I'll switch it over to comfort uh, you can tell it's very a very smooth ride on this smooth pavement. We were on like choppier pavement earlier and we noticed it was a little bit more bouncy, um, but this is a very nice truck to drive on the highway. It also comes with Toyota's Safety Sense 2.5. So right now I've got the adaptive cruise control on. It's got active lane keep assist um, and it's it does a decent job of keeping me in the lane, but this is not their newest system that I've tried in the Lexus NX, which has the Lexus Safety System 3.0. So that's something to, uh, to keep in mind. But this truck drives really nice on the highway. Uh, it has a great ride quality, great visibility overall, and uh, it can get pretty good fuel economy. So I'll be looking forward to testing this uh, on a longer basis to see what I can get in terms of city, highway, and uh, what the range would be, because they did not give me this vehicle with a full tank. Right now it's showing about 270 miles to empty, and it's just above a half a tank. Now this is a full hybrid system, so just like the F-150, if you are traveling at low speeds, it will just cruise on electric power alone. And it makes a really weird noise when it does that. But as you can see at nine miles an hour, I put my foot down just slightly and the gas engine turns on. So this is not a plug-in hybrid, but because it is a full hybrid, unlike the Ram 1500, you can cruise along in parking lot speeds in electric only, which is definitely cool to feel in a truck. But you also notice when the gas engine comes on, it roars to life and it makes a lot of noise. All right, so after driving the iForce Max, the hybrid powertrain, that's the one that I was really excited to drive. I've switched over to just the gas only. So this is just called iForce. Uh, and with 389 horsepower, 479 pound-feet of torque, this base engine certainly is no slouch. On paper, it offers plenty of horsepower, plenty of torque. Uh, and I'm excited to drive this because this is the one that's going to come out first. You can buy this engine starting in December. You're going to have to wait until March for the iForce Max. And just starting off, you can definitely get a sense that the iForce engine is lighter. You don't, you feel like there's less weight over the front of the vehicle for me. Um, this is also the Crew Max, but it also has the shorter five and a half foot bed. So this truck obviously feels a considerable amount lighter versus the uh, standard or versus the iForce Max that I just got out of with the six and a half foot bed. Um, it also has the non fully digital display, which kind of reminds me of the old Tundra. It looks a little dated already for me. The digital one's way, the way to go if you want all the tech. Put your foot down here. You can see the sound also is synthesized. It's definitely a meatier sound. It tries to sound like a V8. This truck does offer an eco, normal, and a sport mode. So no sport plus setting. Also the gauge display doesn't really show you a really cool graphic of it changing. So you kind of lose that by going with the, uh, the non-digital display. Put it into sport mode here. There's also a sport mode in the transmission. Put my foot down there and that's definitely a little bit quicker to shift. This 10 speed is a Toyota in-house developed transmission uh, and it's quick, it shifts quick, it's responsive, no paddles on the wheel again on this limited version. This is also missing the TRD off-road. I'm hoping to hop into a TRD Pro when we do the off-road course uh, later today. But uh, 
Initial driving impressions are strong. Just like on the hybrid, this truck drives really well. Uh, I like the overall package that it gives you. Um, visibility is also strong. Uh, the seats are also pretty comfortable. This has the soft tech, so it has the imitation leather, um, but it certainly feels pretty nice. Uh, and you also have heated and ventilated seats, although just in the front seats, the rears are just heated. Uh, the limited trim actually comes standard with the heated and cooled front seats, which is a great thing to see, um, considering this is kind of more of their volume seller. Uh, so I'm happy that Toy Toyota included that. And you also get all the driver assistance tech features. So you have Toyota Safety Sense 2.5. Uh, and this interior, while it is lacking some of the wood grain and there's a little bit more hard touch plastic materials, there's still some soft touch elements here. Uh, here and this black interior definitely is not my favorite to show on camera, but it is a pretty nice place to, uh, to spend time. So I'm really happy with, uh, with the overall package that you get with a limited grade. little bit of tire spin. I left it in rear drive only. Ooh, very impressive performance. Very comparable to the last EcoBoost 3.5 twin turbo FM50 that I drove. And not as much wheel spin as that 1794 with the hybrid. So you definitely notice the extra torque. I mean, that engine has like an extra 100 more pound feet of torque. How could you not notice it? This truck feels quick with the base engine, base engine, but with the hybrid version, definitely has that low end pull. This truck has it as well. But yeah, the, the electric motor kind of just fills in the gaps and you feel like it's an even quicker truck, which is insane to think of because this is already a relatively fast truck. So it's great to see Toyota offering something like that. So the best time that we got was 6.4 seconds in the iForce Max, the hybrid. That is a significantly heavier truck. So now that we're in the uh, twin turbo V6, let me see what I can get in this model, which is lighter. <laughs> All right, so my first run, 6.81 seconds. This is about a half a second slower than the iForce Max. And you know what? Considering the iForce Max is a lot heavier than this truck that I'm driving, 6.8 is a very strong number. Not quite as quick though, or it's probably around the same time. I think I got 6.7 in the 5.7 V8. The last one I drove was a few months ago. This is plenty of power. And honestly, I'm gonna retest this truck when I have it back home for a full week and where I can test it on my local roads because you know here in, in San Antonio I'm still not entirely sure uh, if I'm at sea or if I'm at elevation or you know maybe it might be affecting the numbers a little bit but 6.8 and 6.4 very strong respectable numbers but I think that the hybrid could probably get in under the uh, six second mark. Now in terms of the performance or in terms of the sound this 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. Obviously it's not gonna replace the V8. The V8 just has a noise to it that is what an enthusiast is gonna like. I mean, Toyota offers it with that catback exhaust. You guys heard the way that V8 sounded. It can't compete. Now on throttle here, when you hear the engine going, Toyota is definitely synthesizing the noise. It sounds very guttural, kind of like it's trying to mimic a V8. And it's not bad, but the exhaust definitely doesn't sound that way. It only sounds like that inside the cabin, which is not a bad sound, but again, it's not gonna replace the love that you have for that V8. But it's certainly, with the improved gas mileage, the improved performance, low-end torque, the, the modern 10-speed auto, um, I would love to see Toyota eventually, you know, do a full electric version or a plug-in hybrid. They didn't confirm that's coming, but they did say that the chassis is built to withstand or to handle full electrification. So that's something to, uh, to keep in mind. But overall, yeah, I am super impressed with the overall package. And you really can't go wrong between the twin turbo V6 iForce and then the iForce Max with its, plug with its electric motor. Both powertrains are phenomenal. All right, so after getting out of the hybrid and the gas on the road, we are finally off the road in this TRD Pro. And this is probably one that I would personally buy myself because it's the bright white exterior TRD off-road with the black wheels and this gorgeous red leather interior. And uh, the TRD Pro is one of the trims um, that comes with the multi-terrain select. It has the crawl control. Uh, it has the rear locker. You can get that on the off-road packages as well, but I haven't driven one of those until now where we are finally off the pavement. And uh, 
In terms of the ground clearance, I forgot to mention this earlier, but uh, most Tundras have around nine inches of ground clearance on the base end. The TRD Pro has just over 11 inches because it includes uh, the one and a half inch or the 1.1 inch lift in the front suspension and it has the Fox two and a half inch internal bypass shocks. Uh, so this is the one that's not necessarily a Raptor competitor. When I asked Toyota, do you compare this to a Raptor? They said, not really. But they did stuff this, of course, with the iForce Max engine. This is the only way you can get a TRD Pro is in Crew Max with the short five and a half of bed with the iForce Max powertrain. So we're going to get this out onto this little course that Toyota set up and let's see how uh, this vehicle performs in its natural habitat. All right, so the first obstacle course, we're going to drive up this rocky hill and Toyota had me put it in the crawl control in low two so theoretically i can just get the truck on this rock hill and they told me that i don't even have to modulate the throttle it'll do that for me um but i'm still having to add throttle i'm in low range right now this is where we can test out that 11 inches of ground clearance and this truck makes it look really easy. I'm literally just crawling up it. And you can see with the cameras in four wheel drive and four low, it shows you everything around here. Impressive. Yeah, this made it look really easy. And with these cameras, I can see exactly what's overneath or above the hood because usually that's a problem with these big trucks is you can't see over the hood when you're in these tight off-road courses. But uh, yeah, so far this is living up to the TRD Pro name for sure. Yeah, there's one thing about the TRD Pro that I have a complaint with the look is the tires. They're too small. They only put 33-inch um, tall tires on this. And they should easily put 35s on it. I agree. I would, they'll probably end up doing an accessory. Uh, yeah, so they said the dealer accessory, but the reason why it has the 33s is because of gas mileage. Mm -hmm. They didn't want it. And they also didn't want to make it um, uncomfortable to drive on the highway, I guess. One of the surprising things about the old TRD Pro is you couldn't get it with their multi-terrain select and their crawl control. This new one now has it. Uh, I've switched it into four high and to engage it, you basically switch from drive mode here to DAC or crawl. And the cool thing is when you start to adjust the mode here, it actually gives you a little graph on how high you want the speed. The lowest is three miles an hour. You can all go all the way up to 18 miles an hour. Now Toyota wants us obviously to use the crawl control as we go downhill. And crawl control is basically off-road cruise control. So I can adjust the speed on the fly here as I go down this steep hill. Uh, and I don't even have to touch the brakes. The vehicle is modulating the brakes and the traction control. And it's gonna maintain about five miles an hour is what I set. I can lower that speed down to three if I'd like, which really slows it down. But we'll go up to five miles an hour. And this is supposed to keep you from sliding when you go down a steep hill. Now this hill, I will say, is not very steep. It's showing maybe like a 15 degree pitch or whatnot. So I'm gonna increase the speed here because this is a tad too slow for my taste. But uh, as we go around this corner here, looks like this area is a little more steep. I'm gonna slow it down a little more, but the turning radius could be better on this new Tundra. I actually have to back up here and try again. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm surprised. laughs> it could use the turn assist that you get on the Land Cruiser. <laughs> but uh, lower the speed here. You can see, wow, you can really feel it change as you uh, adjust the speed on the crawl control. This makes it really easy. I'm literally just foot off the throttle and the brake and the truck just coast down automatically applying the brakes and using the traction control. And it just makes you feel a lot more confident when you're going down these uh, steep hills. All right, so for this last portion here, Toyota wants me to put it back on four low and use the crawl control and use it in low two. Um, this is gonna, of course, show the wheel articulation and really test the ground clearance and the underbody skid plates of the TRD Pro. And pull my camera view back up here because I can't see under the hood. In low two here, it's gonna basically modulate the speed and not let me to go any faster than whatever the computer thinks is a good distance or good speed. But I barely have to tap the throttle here. You really feel the torque of the electric motor of this iForce Max. All right, we can feel a wheel leaving the ground here. And you know what? This truck handles it like a champ. I barely feel the bumpiness of these logs that I'm rolling over. The suspension just soaks up the bumps. We haven't even scraped this truck. It has so much ground clearance. I mean, obviously this is not, I wouldn't say it's Raptor capable or TRX capable, but considering what Toyota offers here, this is gonna be a lot less expensive, most likely. And uh, 
That's very impressive. It makes it seem like a cakewalk. Now, as we approach this area here, you can see there are dips in the, in the dirt. So we're gonna get a wheel into there and we're gonna see how it handles the articulation. Oh, okay. I can use my front camera here to see where I'm putting the truck. All right, there we go. And it's shuffling the power with the crawl control. It's shuffling the power around, sending it to the wheel that has traction. And remember, we've got a real four-wheel drive system here. This has a rear locker. I don't even have to engage the rear locker. I'm just in four low in crawl control. It's using the brakes to send power to the right wheel. Wow, that's so effortless. I'm so impressed with this. Cakewalk, it's a piece of cake with this thing. Very, very impressive off-road. So while we did wait a long time for Toyota to finally give us an all new third generation Tundra, I have to say after spending the day driving both the iForce and the hybridized iForce Max, I'm pretty happy to report that the wait was definitely worth it because Toyota seriously pulled out all the stops for this new generation from the beautiful interior with that new 14 inch infotainment system to the hybrid powertrain, which surprisingly got about 23 MPG on the highway. I suspect you could do even better in the city and to the fact that Toyota listens to their their customers. We now have that longer six and a half foot bed that you can also get with the Crew Mac, which still offers one of the roomiest back seats in the segment. Now I do want to mention, of course, the old Tundra, that one over there, still manages to sell over 100,000 units every year, despite the fact that Toyota kept it in production for 15 years. This new truck, Toyota, didn't say how many they're actually planning to build, but they did say the plant capacity is going to be a lot more than 100,000 units. And I wouldn't be surprised if Toyota easily doubled their numbers for this all-new generation, because as you guys saw, it definitely targets the big three from Detroit. But Toyota basically took everything that we like about the Ford F-150, they copied a lot of the elements from Ford, but they also kind of delivered in the Toyota way. The infotainment system in this truck is really class leading now. It was way behind, and now it's definitely class leading. I love the hybrid powertrain. The styling is gonna take some getting used to. I think on certain trims, this particular one here, I don't like the street truck tires on it and the brown color looks okay from certain angles, but I would probably go for a TRD uh, Pro. And really what Toyota has done here is delivered a truck that finally is modern, it feels refined, it feels well worth the money that of course Toyota is gonna ask for this truck, which by the way, I don't have final pricing yet just yet as of this filming because Toyota says it's not quite ready. I will post that in uh, the description below once Toyota has that number finalized. But if you guys are looking to get your hands on the brand new Tundra, you can expect to start seeing the gas only version showing up at your local Toyota dealership by December. If you want the hybrid version, the iForce Max, you're gonna have to wait until the spring of next year. Toyota is saying probably around March, you should start seeing the hybrid version show up at dealerships. And in terms of pricing, I can only speculate here because the old truck was like around 30,000 ish dollars, the mid $30,000 range. This one's probably going to be more expensive and I'm talking a lot more expensive. This fully loaded crew max 1794 in iForce Max trim, I probably say this truck is going to be close to $70,000. Now, don't quote me, of course, but I'll be curious to see once Toyota finds or releases the finalized pricing because I'm only looking at competitors. And if you, if you fully option an F 150 or a Silverado or a, a GMC Sierra, they can easily be over $70,000. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand spanking new 2022. Toyota Tundra 1794 with the iForce Max powertrain. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.